Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Asana Solutions, YouTube's best place for everything related to Asana, process improvement, and project management. My name is Marquis, I'm your host, and I know it's been a while since you've probably seen a new video from me. And honestly, I can say the number one reason why I haven't been as active outside of the, the podcast videos is I'm not a video editor and it's like so daunting the, the thought of like recording a video and then like spending the time, you know, editing it because I'm a perfectionist and I actually have videos that I've like done that I just haven't edited yet, but I'm taking a different approach today. I'm going to try something a little bit different and see how it works. But I just wanted to say thank you for all the new subscribers that have joined in. Thanks for your comments. Um, those of you that have emailed asking questions, I'm loving it. I'm loving this community that is growing. So thanks for being here. And so we're going to kick this off today um, with two new updates that you may have missed in Asana or that have just been released. And if you haven't taken advantage of them, you're definitely going to want to do that. And so let's jump in here. I've just opened up a random demo project. I'm just going to create something from scratch. Love doing this. Let's just call it demo for today. We'll make it a list. And so the first thing that I want to show you is an update to uh, the rules. You can now add subtask um, uh, subtasks and automations to your rules. And so if you haven't checked it out yet, it's super cool. There's a couple of use cases I'm going to show you today. One of them is the task template. So we're all very familiar with this, right? We can come in here and we can pretty much do whatever we want. We can add in notes here. We can put in media, right? We already know how task templates work. We already know that we can add subtasks here. Um, this is our header. And then we can add in other tasks like so. So this is nothing new. We come up to the right here. We can click on convert task to template. That gets added down here to task template. That's awesome, right? But now we have the ability to automate and add additional subtasks in new use cases. So let's say, for example, I was on a board and this is my production board for my YouTube video. Let's call it. So let's say we're going to call this one draft. We'll call the next one post-production. And then we'll call the next one, um, what do we want? Post to YouTube. There we go. So now what we'll be able to do is if we do start up our task template, we now have the ability to take a task from you know, its original spot in our backlog or in our to-do. We can move it through. And as it moves through the different sections, we can add additional subtasks to it that can basically be triggered from anything. So I'm going to um, add in just a random custom field and we're gonna call this one, let's see what I got here. Let's call this, doesn't really matter. We're gonna call it dev status because it really doesn't. But we have this um, option here and now let's look at dev status. So we have spec, design, code, review, test, and done. I'm gonna go over to my rules and hit on customize. I'm gonna build a rule. Oh, something cool you may have missed as well is when you do click on these three dots, now you can add rules right from here, from this section. You don't have to go to customize and go to rules. You can have it come right from here. So I'm just going to add this rule right in here. And when a task is moved to this section, no, I want a different trigger. So we're going to say our trigger is when dev status changes to design, we are going to move it to the next section. So let's say we're going to move it to post-production and now we want it to add in a set of subtasks. So do this thing for, what did we say? Post-production. Awesome. Um, I'm going to make sure that this rule can be triggered by others. Awesome. And then I'm going to go create rule. Now I'm going to make a second rule. Um, that's going to say when something moves to post to YouTube, another action is going to be taken. We're going to add some more subtasks. So we're going to add a rule to this section. And again, we're going to make a different trigger. And when dev status is updated um, to test, um, we are going to move it to the section um, post to YouTube. And we're going to add some other subtasks. Do this next. And we're going to make it do um, today. This is a really cool feature. Well, now you can have um, when is a task due. You can add date range for this. You can add times to this. But I'm just going to do it for zero, which makes it you know the same day as you can see 
right there. And then we can also assign it to a person in your workflow. So there we go. We're going to send it to Chris uh, today, and then we're going to go create this rule. So now um, we're going to move this task over. Let's just update it from here because I didn't add the actual moving to a section. So our first one was design. We're going to see what's going to happen here. Asana is doing its thing. It's running. There we go. And we have an additional subtask. So do this thing for post-production. There it is. All right. And now we're going to change this to test. We're going to move it over. Asana is going to do its thing. Let's close that up. And now we can see it's in test and it's added another subtask and it's assigned it to Chris for today. So this is an incredibly powerful update um, because, you know, now for the first time in any of our, you know, production items, we can actually, you know, add in different people um, at different stages and make sure that those things are assigned to them, you know, in accordance with when we need those tasks completed. It's a game changer. Another use case, which I'll show you really quickly, you probably are thinking about this already, but the way that we're using this is we have our sales pipeline in, in Asana. It's, it's linked to our HubSpot and we can have a two-way sync, but let's say you had a form and the form could be anything. So let's have a single select here and we're going to call it dev status. And we're going to link that to our dev status. There we go. So now we can say, um, when that comes in, let's make this required. Sure, doesn't really matter. And I'm going to copy this link for now. There we go. So now the rule we're going to make, um, let's, let's put it in draft for now. So now the rule we're going to create is, let's see what we can do. So when a um, trigger, let's do this again. We're going to set a dev status for spec. When the dev status spec is used, right, if it's filled up from the form, um, we are going to add, you know, other subtasks. So um, do this first, and then we're going to add another one. Very important, right? There we go. And we're going to create this rule. So now I'm going to submit my form, and we're going to see what is going to happen. Let's pull this up really quickly. All right, perfect. So I'm going to enter my name, key, I'm going to enter my email. That's my email. Feel free to email me if you have any questions. And we're going to set this to, oh, get out of my way. We're going to set this to spec. There we go. We're going to submit. Awesome. And we're going to see our task is coming in to this section. There we go. It's been added to spec. All right. And there we go. We can see our subtasks right there. Um, obviously, I didn't add in the, the task uh, or the rule to move it to drafts, but there we go. We have our, our first two subtasks. Now I'm going to click in and then, um, like we saw before, it's going to add on even more subtasks. So again, a really powerful tool. I love that Asana did this. They finally listened. Um, this has been a long time coming. And now it just excites me for what, you know, um, could come next, right? Imagine if then branches in our rules and automations, if this thing happens in this one project, then this should happen. That would be, you know, hopefully the next, you know, logical step. And that would change everything over again. The next thing I want to show you while we're here, we're talking about custom fields, is you can now create multi-select custom fields. Whereas in the past, you would just have one option in your drop downs. Now you can do multiple um, selections. So again, we're going to go to customize and we're going to add a field and it's right here. If you don't have this yet, it's still rolling out to your account, but the multi-select, we're going to call this dev two. And so now let's just keep these option one, two, three. Why not? Um, there we go. And then we can have option four. Um, do I want to notify? Yeah, why not? So now we're going to create this field. And now within any of our tasks, instead of just selecting, you know, one option from dev, you know, maybe a couple of departments are responsible for this task. Maybe it's categorized into a, a couple different, you know, sections. We can now just check off the ones that we want to add in. Now it's pretty cool because obviously we're seeing, you know, some flexibility here in how we can use the custom fields, but I will point out one thing that um, I wasn't super happy about, but there are, sorry, two things, I guess. So when we go to our sorting, as you can see, we can sort by dev status, but we can't 
sort by dev status too. It doesn't allow us to do that yet, right? We would have to go to filtering, create that custom filter, right? To go to dev two and then contains, you know, any one of these. So we would have to go to that option if we wanted to see only those tasks. The second thing that I don't love about it, but I can assume that it's coming is how we interact with forms. So if we go back to our form here, I'm gonna edit it for a quick second and we're gonna add in a multi-select. So let's call this dev two. You would think that you'd be able to, <gasps> they did it, they did it. There it is. This literally wasn't here a week ago. So I'm like finding out these new things as you're finding them out as well. This is amazing. Okay. So like literally a week ago when I saw this, that was not an option. You could not connect a multi-select to a multi-select uh, custom field. So awesome job, Asana. Good job. I love that you did that. Um, that's perfect. So I think this video has gone on long enough. There have been so many updates and changes. Um, if there are any others that you've seen that have really changed your workflow, um, like I didn't even get into goals and all the updates they've made there or portfolios and reports, but if you know of any others, let me know in the comments. If you want to see any demos on anything, let me know as well. But, uh, thanks for being here and joining along on this journey. We'll talk to you next time.